All right, guys, today I am doing something kind of new-ish, maybe, I don't know. I'm here to talk about this thing. It's not very often that I do phone reviews, but I figured, yeah, just fuck it. This can't be that difficult. <laughs> Everybody does it. You just point a camera at a phone and you say tech buzz words and everyone throws lots of views your way. That's how this works, right? Well, I like to do things a little differently than the average review, per se, because most of the reviews that you'll see for phones um, are usually a week or two of experience with it because they get the phone about a week early, a few days early, and then they have to hit that, they have to hit that uh, deadline on launch day in order to get those clicks. Um, but I'd like to bring you more of a long-term kind of usage scenario from someone who's more uh, into the Android side of things and someone who's more, you know, of that camp and someone of the camp who thinks Apple can just literally go fuck right off in many, 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 many ways. But those are, those are all topics that we'll get to later, maybe, probably not. But I wanted to start with, um, I have kind of some bullet points here that I'm just going to kind of run down. So if I, if I keep looking away, it's because I'm looking at my bullet points to remind me. First thing first, the unboxing experience of the iPhone was actually kind of a nice treat. Um, it's the second iPhone I've ever unboxed, and I can see how the unboxing experience is really nice for someone who's never done it before, but if you, someone, so if you're someone who buys iPhones all the time, I can see it getting pretty old pretty quick, because it's literally the exact same thing. The phone itself is also incredibly slick and slippery, and just um, I would super highly recommend a case or a skin with it, um, just because of how often and just how weird it is to grip, and it's very wide, and it's just, ugh, it's just awkward. It's just awkward. iOS is a lot more fully featured than it used to be back in the day. Um, there's a lot of little tips and tricks and tweaks and all that fun stuff that you can do nowadays that make the phone experience uh, a lot better for the day-to-day -day experience, but there's still a lot of really stupid stuff that Apple does with iOS that just infuriates me to no end. Um, I, I don't really want to focus on iOS for this video. I want to focus on the phone, so I'll just kind of mention the things that like got in the way of me actually using the phone um and i might come back to ios in a later video when i can just kind of focus on it and just blast the crap out of it because it's pretty ugh. um the home button wasn't really that much of an issue for me uh, i took about three days or so of usage before i was finally like used to it to the point where i didn't have to like consciously think like oh yeah it's a pressure button like <laughs> um I think it was about seven before, like, whenever I, like, actually got like, used to it and I didn't have to, like, consciously think, like, okay, play, apply this much pressure. Um, and it was probably about three weeks after that that I quit thinking about it every single time that I pressed it that, hey, this isn't a real button, this is a pressure thing. Um, so it was more it was more of a mental thing for me than it was a, uh, a physical thing. Um, but eh, pros and cons. I actually really like the idea of the pressure button. Um, it's not as tactile as the as the, the home buttons and prior phones, but I feel like the pressure sensitive button is definitely a good advancement. It's a good way forward. Um, speaking of the the home button, the haptics on this phone are just orgasmically good. Like holy crap. I'm so pissed that it took Apple of all people to innovate on the vibration motor in phones cuz holy crap, I've been asking for this for years in smartphone manufacturers and it pisses me off that Apple's the one that got it right. But goddamn did they get it right. There's so many little details like the way that it pulses with ringtones. Um there's a bunch of different patterns to the vibration, so a lot of them will feel um, like you can make you can feel the difference between a tap and a poke and a and a nudge and like um, it integrates with the OS in a lot in a lot more smooth ways. Like whenever you're scrolling up and down lists, it'll kind of feel like a little bump when you hit the end, and it's just it's so nice. And goddamn, please more phone manufacturers steal this because it's so good, and it makes me so sad because this is gonna be the one feature of the iPhone that I actually am going to miss with the S8 and going forward into the future for like years to come because I know nobody's gonna come close to this for, for a long time. But yeah, it's it's great. It's not audible um, in a work environment, so I can have it in my pocket and it's obviously noticeable um, when I'm getting text messages or calls, but if I leave it on 
my desk, I it, I don't like the person sitting next to me doesn't doesn't feel the vibrations or doesn't hear them rather. Um, you can kind of feel it if you feel the table, but I mean, it, it's 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 really great to not have to like. I, I can imagine it being amazing for like the cubicle environment where like one person gets a text message and the entire office just hears, <laughs> um, it's just gone and it's fantastic and it's so fucking good. It makes me so mad, but it's so fucking good. Touch ID is insanely fast and it's insanely accurate and it's insanely good. It's great, it's convenient, it works for everything and I don't know why anybody would object to using it. Um, because it's just, it's great. It's convenient, it's in a convenient spot, it just kind of works. It's insane how quickly it works too. Um, as you can see, uh, it's very, like, like barely touch it and it just reads the entire thumbprint. It reads it just as fast as it would otherwise and it's just, it's insane. Uh, more, more, more apps need to support Touch ID and more, like, everyone just needs to use it because it's just that good. Um, it's a little too quick. <laughs> personally um because I, I hate the whole having to touch the home button thing like having to act so like i can do the thumb thing and then like oh okay it lights up but it didn't do it that time uh so like if i just wake up the phone normally and then i rest my thumb on it it unlocks but then i have to actually press it to get it to, to go in i think that's stupid um but you can turn that off with an accessibility feature but then that makes <laughs> but then that just makes uh, it makes it so much harder to use because out of force of habit, you'll just wake it up using your thumb and it just unlocks before you even have a chance to to even like do anything with it. If I had a proper angle, there we go. Like it just unlocks. Like okay, I saw the time. That's great. I, I have a feeling that so like so like the whole it's it's really funny because Apple just keeps introducing Apple solutions to Apple problems. Like um, the whole home button press was a was an answer to people on the 6s not being able to read their notifications because the thumbprint scanner was so quick. So they added that, and iOS 10 to slow it down. But then with the iPhone 7 and I think the 6s now, um, it gets weird because then they added raised awake as a feature to combat the fact that you'd have to press the button to wake up the phone, which is a Apple fix for an Apple fix for an Apple problem. So it, get, it gets kind of weird and recursive there. Um, yeah, Raised Awake was entirely fucking useless, by the way. I would highly recommend you turn that off, because holy shit, that sucked so bad. I cannot tell you how many times, like, I would bump my phone, and it would just, just light right up, and it was stupid, and it was irritating, and I hated it. Um, it was much easier for me just to pull it out of the pocket and just naturally rest my thumb on the, on the button, and just as soon as I'd pull it up, it'd just be ready to go. Um, so I wouldn't really have to worry about it too much, so raised weight was kind of pointless. It just ended up irritating me, so yeah, turn that turn that off uh, would be my advice. Um, Siri, Siri is still an absolute fucking joke. It is terrible. It is hilariously bad. I cannot tell you how many times I tried to get it to do stupid things, and it just flat out couldn't do it. Um, or it just completely misunderstood what I was trying to say. Um... I'll have some I'll have some screen captures kind of floating around of examples of this because holy crap it is terrible, um, and there's even been a few times where I'd ask Siri to set the timer and it would just flat out just not ring. Um, the first time that happened, I ended up burning a pizza, like to a crisp. It was in there for like another ten to fifteen minutes before I realized, oh crap, my alarm hasn't gone off. That was ten minutes ago. Thanks. Um, and then it happened the second time, but the second time I already didn't trust the timer, so I was keeping up with it anyway, which defeats the fucking purpose of setting a timer. It's so irritating that it makes me hit my light. Find me the nearest Burger King. That's what it was. Okay, James, here's what I found. Find me another one. Okay, here's what I found. Look! South Philly cheesesteaks. What the f- <laughs> What is that? Like, what? Find me another one. Okay, here's what I found. Why? Why is it finding South Philly cheese? Okay, let's let's do this. Okay, ready? Find me the nearest Burger King. Okay, check it out. What? That time I even I even said burger and it pulls up South Philly cheesesteaks. Find me the nearest Burger King. What the fuck, Siri? Why are you so terrible? Find me the nearest Burger King. Okay, James. Here's what I found. 
Okay, Burger King, right? Find me another one. Okay, it's what I found. Find me another one. It's what I found. What? 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 <laughs> like, I'm not... This isn't... This is all gonna be one take, just so I can show how stupid this is. Uh, Megan, can I see your phone real quick? So just for comparison, I'm gonna use my wife's S8. You haven't set up Google Assistant yet, have you? I have. Find me the nearest Burger King. Find me another one. The address for Burger King is Burger King, 6722. Okay, that's the same one. How about a different one? Okay, well that kind of failed too. All right, well that was a poor example then. Okay, but but still, it at least showed me Burger King again. Like it might have been the same one, but it knew that I was saying, "Hey, a different Burger King, please." Siri was trying to show me cheesesteaks. Like what the fuck is that? The phone also had really consistent battery life. I will give it that. It wasn't that great in the screen on time. Uh, de in, the, in the whole screen on time usage department, but it was very consistent. Um, if I used my phone, like, if I was, like, noticeably using it more, I would be able to tell, like, around one or two, my phone would pop up with the low battery warning. Um, if I was a little more lenient without it throughout the day, uh, I'd, I'd be able to get it to the end of my shift and uh, have, like, I'll say, like, 30-35%. That was, that was a pretty consistent, like, it was, it was like that. It was one or the two. It wasn't it wasn't like some days I'd, I'd get home, like with my um, other Android phones, like some days I'd get home and I'd have like 80% and the other days I'd have like 3% by noon. Like it's just, it was a lot more consistent. Um, there wasn't there wasn't a whole lot of frame dropping or frame lag with the phone, but I noticed that touch latency was a lot higher than, um, than other phones. Um, so touch latency is the difference between when you actually do an action and when the screen updates. Um, I'll try to get some comparisons. I'll do like slow mo, um, maybe with other phones. I don't. I don't know if I'm able to get it to come out right. I'll. I'll do some comparisons. Otherwise, I'll link to an article in the in the description, which will explain touch latency for those of you who aren't familiar with it. The camera on the S on the the, the camera on the Seven Plus is pretty okay. It's nothing groundbreaking. It's nothing revolutionary. It's very consistent. It's it's kind of pretty not okay at low light compared to other phones I've had. Um, it tends to push the ISO um, and uh, shutter speed um, to like really crazily high levels just to get that brightness in. Um, and there's a lot of examples of that. Um, I know, I remember when the phone first came out, uh, there was a lot of people who were like, I went to this EDM dance party and these are some light, these are some shots I took. Aren't they amazing? And like when they're zoomed completely out, like, they look great, but then you zoom it in, and it's just, like, one gigantic, like, ghost blur, and it looks like shit. Um, that's a pretty common thing I've noticed with the 7 Plus. Especially in my apartment, I don't have that great lighting, in case you couldn't tell. We... In fact, I think I'm just gonna do this for the rest of the video. There we go. There's, that's, that's the lighting I need. So now that I'm in perfect detail... Yeah. This is the most professional YouTube. Like, I, I don't know why anyone watches this channel. Um, the, the dual camera setup is pretty nifty. I'm going to use the word nifty because it's not quite that useful, but it's a cool thing to play around with. I, I There were some shots that, that I was kind of like messing with with the camera. Um, I'll, I'll intersplice some video if I actually have good video for it. But yeah, there were some shots that I could do that would cause the camera to jump between the two. And every so often I would see kind of like a hiccup where the camera would abruptly flip between the two sensors uh, and not and not slowly interpolate like it's supposed to. Um, they were often enough to where I'd notice it and it would be kind of distracting, um, but it was it never like ruined a shot or anything like that. Um, again, just like with the battery life, the camera was very consistent. It was just it was a good all arounder. Um, the everyone seems to say that the dual camera setup works in video, but I can't find any proof of that actually happening on the phone side of things because um, like the way that it zooms in on the video is completely different than it does in the viewfinder um, and I 
like I was playing with like the sensor and like the things that would cause the sensor to, to freak out um, when doing the, the viewfinder wouldn't freak it out in video um, and just little things like that. So I, I'm not convinced that it's actually using the secondary sensor in video, uh, but it could just kind of like stealth be stitching in information. I, I, I don't know. Uh, portrait mode, however, is the worst fucking thing I have ever seen. Holy crap. Every single photo I have taken with portrait mode looks fake and it looks disgusting. Uh, it's it gives me a really weird uncanny valley effect and I have a few friends who are like super into iPhones and just sit there and jerk the Steve Jobs cock all day um, and like they'll post pictures and I just like I can't look at these pictures because it just like I, I hate to use this phrase but like it triggers me like looking at them because like I, I don't know if it's like I'm used to like depth of field and like how it's supposed to look and that's like super not depth of field. Um, but it's like, it literally looks like somebody opened up Photoshop and just went, gosh, and blur all around everybody. And like, it just, it looks bad. Um, the videos themselves are, was also kind of an interesting thing for me to benchmark. Um, I compared the iPhone 7 Plus to an iPhone 6 Plus, a Galaxy S6 Active. And for shits and giggles, an, I, uh, an old Nexus 6, because that was the benchmark for terrible. And as long as you can beat that, you're doing pretty okay. So Surprisingly, the the Galaxy S6 Active was actually the best one that I used, um, both in terms of stability and in terms of video quality. Um, the 7 Plus uh, beat out the 6 Plus, um, basically just in sensor detail, so like sharpness and color, contrast, and all that fun stuff. Um, otherwise, the 6 Plus and the 7 Plus are pretty comparable in terms of video quality, um, and the Nexus 6 just kind of made me throw up all over myself. So as long as, again, as long as you're not doing that, I think we're okay. Um, it's not as bad as I remembered it being, but it's, it's still pretty bad. <laughs> um, the earpiece speaker was also kind of useless in the grand scheme of things. It really didn't add that much to the sound signature, I felt. Um, it added a little bit of mids, but I, I would block it intentionally holding it landscape and you wouldn't, you don't really notice it that much. Um, it helps with loudness, but these speakers are already loud enough where it's really not that big of a deal. Um, like... It still lets me listen to sound if I accidentally block the bottom speaker, but the top speaker doesn't sound right unless the bottom speaker is also firing. Like, I don't know how to explain it. Like, it's almost like they designed it, it to, to my ears, and I realize it sounds kind of subjective and blah, blah, blah. Uh, but to my ears, it sounds like the bottom speaker was tuned for highs and lows and kind of drops out in the middles, whereas the earpiece was tuned for middles. So if you're getting the whole the whole thing it sounds full and complete but if you block one of the others it just sounds kind of hollow and weird um that's that's my unscientific uh point of view speakers are loud they're really loud and it's really nice but that's about it uh, i could i could totally live without the front facing speaker because they just didn't do it right um also speaking of audio i don't really care about the headphone jack like I, I i legitimately don't care I've been using Bluetooth headphones for like six years now. That blows me away how people are still using 3.5 for everything on their phone. Because Bluetooth is just... Yeah, I, I feel like the convenience that you gain from not having to worry about wires is very much worth the inconvenience of having to charge and the slight quality loss. Um, and people are bitching because like price and blah, blah, blah. But you can pick up the same headphones that I bought at retail like six years ago for like 20 bucks on eBay right now if you buy non-OEM packaging. And it's pretty fucking great. Like, I bought some for my mom, and she just loves them. Uh, because they're the same headphones that I paid. That I, that I, I, okay, I got my headphones as a discount through my last job. But they retailed for $100 at the time. So, Bluetooth headphones for 100 bucks, they're going to sound pretty okay. They sound better than a lot of headphones I've tried, to be honest with you. Um, uh, but head, headphones are subjective, I know, I know. But it just, it just kills me. Like, they're so nice. Not having wires, it's fantastic. And speaking of weird Apple innovations that is just weird because Apple's Apple and has to fix the Apple problems to Apple solutions or however I said it earlier. Um, 3D Touch. It's weird. 3D Touch literally feels like, well, shit, we have to add a menu button. And the engineer was like, no, I refuse. Johnny Ive was like, no, no extra buttons. We have to have one button. Because the the unwashed masses don't know how to use two buttons. We can't do that, John. I can't let you do that. But yeah, like 3D Touch feels... It just It's a gimmick. Um, it's got all kinds of cool stuff. 
when it's used properly, but it's kind of very rarely used properly, and it kind of just feels like, uh, it very much just feels like Apple went, hey, we need another button, but how, how do button? This is touch, yeah. Who needs a scroll wheel? Who all remembers that? Who needs a pencil? Oh, wait. Like, it's just, I, don't, I don't know. Like, I like the, I like the concept of 3D touch, but, like, in execution, it's just one of those design touches that's like, don't, know, don't do this. Like, it's, it's a cool idea, but it's not gonna work. Just, just kill it off, and nobody will miss it. There's one or two features that are actually kind of nice, like the being able to preview URLs, um, just long press, you know, or double tap. That, that would work too. Or even, you know what, you can make it work in your existing design language. Um, you just press and hold, and then in like the little pop-up thing, you just press preview, and then whoop, preview, and then you press the arrow up at the top, and then this, why does my hand keep grabbing focus on the camera? That's weird. Stop doing that. Yeah, self strength, self strength is pretty on par with other phones. I didn't really notice any dips in speed or quality in places that are pretty unusual. Um, I did currently just switch to T-Mobile, so uh, I, I didn't notice any anything different from the Nexus Six that I was using and the iPhone Six Plus I was using before that, and like it was all pretty comparable. Um, call quality was pretty excellent, like most iPhones is, to be honest. Um, the earpiece sounds very pleasant to use, and, um, it has some great noise cancellation as well when used, uh, like, compared to other, compared to other phones. Um, T-Mobile to T-Mobile voice quality is freaking fantastic, like, it's so good, and it literally sounds like you're on a FaceTime audio call or, like, a Hangouts call with somebody. It's so crystal clear, it's great, and, um, the iPhone does a pretty good job of... Of picking that up pretty uh, i'd say the iphone earpiece is one of the best one ones on the market right now um there are some things that just absolutely baffle me about ios like how can you just deliberately screw people for so long and just like like ah! um i know i said i didn't want to do a whole ios rant this video but i'm just going to go over some things that like really bother me and kind of got in the way of using my phone um first thing why can i be told data on um, how much data I've used and all my battery usage. Uh, battery usage tracking is completely and utterly useless as it only tells you 24 hours or seven days. Um, and I'm pretty sure it's a rolling 24 hour period. So what the hell is the point of that? Like, what does that tell you? Oh, and it will also tell you um, how long the iPhone, uh, if, if the iPhone's been plugged in before and it will tell you estimate usage time. Great, that's fucking great. But usage time also lumps in screen on time and like music. So it's like, oh. It's bad. Oh, and the data tracker is like, it's continuous. It, it, it doesn't reset every month. It just keeps counting and it just keeps counting and it just keeps counting. So that's great that I've used, you know, 800 gigabytes since I've got the phone. That's, that doesn't help me figure out what has been using my data this month. And, oh, okay, I, something else. I can't access my data usage unless I have a SIM card installed. Why? <laughs> Why is that a thing? I, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. How can you be so anti-user? Like, I just don't get it. Um, you still can't arrange icons in the order that you want them. It uh, doesn't matter if you want them in the lower right, because, you know, oh, when you're holding a phone, that's the part of the area that's easy to reach. No, screw you. Upper left. That's where your icons will go, because you had an open space, and how fucking dare you want to move it somewhere else? Just... Uh, I... It's irritating that I still have to have the icons arranged left to upper, left to lower right. Um, it's still irritating that all the widgets are in the the notification, like the, there's no other place to put them. Um, Notify like control center is still still terrible. Like I'm kind of forced into the options that they give me, and dear God, I better I better thank Steve Jobs for the opportunity to have the options that he gave me because. Like, I, I, I never use rotation lock. Can I please replace that with power saver? No, just fuck you. How dare you? Like, it, it, it just kills me how hostile iOS is to its users. Like, <sighs> all right, I'm starting to rant. I'm starting to rant. Move on. Um, I like that you can remove some of the stock apps, but it's near impossible to go to the store and find them sometimes. Um, the Apple made category doesn't include the stock apps. Uh, do, a, do Go to the app store and just search for videos because that's the name of the stock video app. You're not going to find it. You're not. <laughs> I had to track down a direct link that somebody had posted on Google because I could not find it. There was no category option for it. Couldn't find it in search. Made by Apple doesn't include the stock apps for tracking, please. 
like the little box is just like it, it locks onto my hand like it's it's hysterical whatever custom keyboards are not allowed to type in passwords what the hell I, you you make me you make me select a menu option that specifically says yes i understand that this can capture my input when i'm typing in passwords please let me do it and then you don't let me do it like, even if you go into the settings and actually disable the stock keyboard completely to where you're only using a custom keyboard, um, if you if you try to do it on the lock screen on a notification or if you're typing in a password, it forces you to use the stock keyboard anyway. And if you had disabled the stock keyboard, you can no longer do, um, uh, it doesn't do autocorrect or suggestions anymore. What? If you're going to force me into situations to use your keyboard, don't hamstring it. Just because I chose not to do it. Like, I don't... <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is starting to turn into a rant, isn't it? Um, after installing 10.3, my phone was updating for three hours. I have a 32 gigabyte phone. I realized that it's converting the file structure and everything over, but three hours! The average was like 45 minutes. It shouldn't have taken that long. I'm so glad that I waited until I came home so I could up so I could back up my phone and update it via the computer, because if I had done that at work, like it kept pestering me to do, I would have been without a phone at work during a really busy day, so I wouldn't have been able to call people, I wouldn't be able to check shipments, I wouldn't be able to do anything. So, that was almost bad. But, you know, the average person's not going to think to do that. They're just going to go, update, click! <laughs> Where did my phone no work? Why am phone no work great? There's all kinds of other weird odds and ends that I had with 10.3. Um, it would respring all the fucking time whenever I'd wake it up. I kind of got it on video here, but like not really. Um, and there was all kinds of just like weird bugs. Like whenever you switch to the multitasking, like if I was watching a YouTube video, but then I went to multitasking, it would play the animation and landscape, but everything would be rotated to portrait and then the phone would snap to portrait. So it was, it was kind of weird. Um, speaking of YouTube, um, YouTube videos would, like if I went, back to the YouTube app from the multitasking view and I was watching a video in landscape it would start to play the video in landscape but then the phone would rotate the portrait so it would give me like half of the video and the other half would just be black like just weird stupid weird bugs like that that were that just kind of <sighs> again I'm starting to rant but like uh, just there's so many little issues like that that I could just go on for hours like it's bad um and a lot of them got in the way of me enjoying the phone because the iPhone is supposed to be simple and it's supposed to be easy to just pick up and anybody can do it and blah, 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 and it'll be great. That's fine, but it doesn't work that way in practice with all of these weird visual bugs and like it just doesn't feel very put together and like it's so hostile to the user experience. Like I, it literally makes you feel like you're, you're being held hostage. Like it's terrible. But with all of that said, the iPhone 7 has been my most stable daily driver to date. I haven't had to worry about random apps like Gmail just deciding one day to eat 80% of my battery by noon. Um, I don't have to worry about just stupid stuff like that. Um, I don't have to worry about clearing out apps from my memory. and I don't have to worry about... Um, just stupid incompatibilities because it just kind of works, which is really nice. But that's definitely more than made up for in the the user hostility, the lack of freedom for choosing options, the lack of just choice for things in general. Um, why can't I select Gmail as my default email app? Um, why can't I select Chrome as my default as my default web browser? Um, like it's just things like that. They're just. It doesn't lead to a good cohesive phone experience. Um, if you're a power user, I would definitely recommend you stick with Android because there's so much more flexibility and things integrate at a system level so much tighter um, than, than iOS will allow. But, you know, I, I, I enjoy my experience. Would I do it again? Probably. No, fuck no. I, I might dabble with it again for like another month or two when the next iPhone comes out or when the next major update comes out. But uh, my advice would honestly be if you're curious about iOS, pick up an iPad. You can pick up an old one for pretty cheap nowadays. Um, or maybe even like an old 5S or even like an old 6. Just to tinker around with. Just to see what iOS is like. Because it's really not that bad. Um, and you might end up liking it, to be honest with you. It's just not for me personally. There's too many trade-offs and too many drawbacks for how I personally use my phone. 
But you give it a proper test period and you might end up liking it. So now that all that stupid f review shit's out of the way, let's uh, let's do a little disassembly here. So uh, make sure that you take out your pentalobe screws at the bottom. Um, there's two at the bottom like usual. Uh, the iPhone 7 is sealed for water resistivity, so uh, use lots of heat, don't be afraid. Um, actually, what I'm showing right here is the screen's IPS panel, how it darkens like that. Um, it does recover. It's just a minor symptom of the heat, um, but it, it will come back, so you don't have to worry about burning it like you would a, a Samsung uh, AMOLED screen, for example. Now, the adhesive is kind of strong, um, so don't be afraid to uh, get in there, use a knife. Um, I'm a lot more practiced now than when I recorded this video, um, so I've got a lot better techniques, but um, just, you know, use whatever tool's comfortable for you, kind of break the adhesive, like I said, don't be afraid to use heat. And um, be careful of the clips up at the top. It does kind of clip in, so you have to pull down slightly. But as long as you're gentle and you don't jerk, um, you won't rip any cables and the phone will just peel right apart. Easy peasy. And here we get to see Apple's uh, fuck you design, <laughs> where they do everything possible just to make our lives harder when repairing these devices. Um, a lot of the screws were transitioned to uh, the tri-wing. And um, the design of the phone itself, like the way the charger ports plug in, the way that it's just kind of built is more so just to kind of screw over repair shops, which is frustrating and irritating and really annoying for do-it-yourselfers and all that fun stuff. But, uh, you know, what can you do? If you've done an iPhone before, it's very, very, very easy. You just follow the same steps that you've done before. There's a lot more of the annoyances that you'd have to deal with, like, um, compared to like an iPhone 6 or 6S, uh, but it's the same basic concept. Um, just remember to, dis to disconnect your battery whenever you've got all your plates off. Um, be gentle with them. Uh, follow the rules that you would with the 6 Plus. Um, don't use too much pressure on the flex cables and don't pull from one side. Try to pull from the from the middle or where the connection is the stronger so you don't bend the, bend the connectors. Um, and it just pops right off. So here's a close-up of the actual screen itself. Um, wanted to get a closer look at the, uh, the the home assembly there and the front camera. Uh, I didn't actually take those apart for this screen just because it you know wasn't really necessary. But um, here's a close-up of those screws. Um, it does use the same tri-wing screws um, for the side as it does um, everywhere else. So the good news is that if you have the right, the right size screwdriver, it'll just kind of work over the phone. Um, some differences between the 7 and the 7 Plus, uh, the 7 will use uh, Phillips heads where the 7 uses or 7 Plus uses the tri-wings. It's, it's kind of weird. Mostly just annoying just to screw with us. But, you know, when you've done your screen repair, just everything snaps back into place. Pretty, like I said, it's, it's just, if you've done an iPhone before, and you're someone like me, like I work in a repair shop, so I've done I've done so many iPhones, I can't even count. Um, it's it's a very familiar process, and nothing is too complicated. Just like I said, make sure that the battery stays unplugged when you're unplugging and plugging in screens. Um, just go slow. Don't rip your cables, because uh, the last thing you want to do is rip one of these bad boys. Um, and especially look out for that uh, earpiece flex, the front camera flex, because that is booby trapped. Booby trapped to hell and back, and it's uh, it's it's quite frustrating. But yeah, that is the phone disassembled and put back together. Uh, don't forget your bottom screws. <laughs> That's a very amateur mistake to make. Can't tell you how many times. I guarantee you, everybody's done that mistake at least twice. <laughs> All right, guys. Woo! Phone reviews are fun. I got two phone boxes right here. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. Well, this was the first major phone review I've done, and I actually I tried to shoot um, in different places. That way, it's not just this boring room with this one boring camera angle. Um, so uh, yeah, let me know down in the down in the description if you liked uh, the new locations and all that fun stuff, and um, let me know if you're interested in me reviewing the S8 because uh, that's actually what I filmed uh, this part of the review on because my stupid camera is being stupid and I can't record more than five minutes at a time. Thanks, Sony. But yeah, um, just let me know what you thought. Um, I will uh, be I'll be paying attention and answering questions in the comments if you guys have something that you wanna that you wanna you know comment on or you wanna ask me questions about. Um, and we'll just kind of go from there. So thank you very much for watching my first phone review. Hopefully in the future they don't suck quite as much as this one, and hopefully the phones themselves just get that much better. All right, guys, I'll see you all around.